Okay, we're, uh, we're about to get things started here. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in to our SolidWorks is Changing webinar. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to what we have to say on a topic that really is quite relevant, whether you're um, a current SolidWorks user or, or you're just evaluating uh, some CAD choices. So there's been some, some recent media coverage indicating that a new product is coming um, and, and that may raise concerns that uh, you know what will happen with that with that product with uh, what will happen with SolidWorks in any day that you've created there um, will that product eventually be you know shadowed by their next gen system or or will you have to someday convert all of your your data for for use in that next gen system um, it's anyone's guess really uh, but after the strong announcements a few years ago showing that SolidWorks you know is coming on a new platform you have to wonder if those thousands of hours that you that you've put into CAD work will be lost. Um, before we dive into things too far, uh, I just want to take a second to uh, to do some introductions. My name is Patrick Patrick Boot, and um, I'm a business development manager here at Edge Design Systems. Uh, we'll also be hearing from Liam Roney, an application engineer, and uh, we're going to spend the next 30 to 40 minutes just showing you um, showing you all ways to protect your investment in 3D CAD while getting a boost in productivity at the same time. Um, so there's there's really no sense in hiding it. Um, SolidWorks seems to to be everywhere in mid market CAD, um, and has been for some time now. Uh, the brand is almost is almost synonymous with with three D modeling. Um, but there there are some other points that have continued to make news in engineering circles over the past few years, uh, and we're going to bring some of those to light in this presentation. So what do we really mean when when we say that SolidWorks is changing? Um, What's changing about it? Well, it's it's not as simple as a rebranding or, or something along those lines. This is this isn't just a new box. This is this is a fundamental change to how SolidWorks computes and builds the geometry in your models. Um, what what they're changing is called the kernel. So some of you know the lingo and you'll know what the kernel is. But for those of you who don't, I'll try to clarify things a bit. Uh, think of the kernel as the brain of the CAD program. Um, the calculating engine that really computes all the geometric conditions in SolidWorks. Um, in SolidWorks today, that kernel is called the parasolid kernel. Um, this is this is what's about to change. Um, the new version of SolidWorks is being developed uh, and will run on a different kernel called the Inovia V6 kernel. Uh, it's also been referred to as the CATIA kernel or the CGM kernel. Um, word has definitely been spreading that Dassault, the company that developed SolidWorks, will be making this change. Um, but it's been far from clear. Um, if uh, if you've taken a chance to uh, to look at the SolidWorks news groups, you'll, you'll see comments like this. Um, I'll just take a moment to, to bring some people up to speed on some recent posts. Um, a former CEO over at SolidWorks um, sort of let it slip and announced a couple of years ago that SolidWorks would be changing platforms, and customers in the industry sort of went on this rampage worrying about the future of that tool. Um, not soon after, uh, SolidWorks sort of soften their approach a little bit and a gentleman named Matt West uh, who's in charge of, of social media marketing indicated this point that SolidWorks will not change uh, and be developed in parallel with a new conceptual next-gen system meaning that SolidWorks um, will con be, continue to be based on the parasol kernel which I mentioned before. Um, this was followed by another comment that SolidWorks will deliver a next-gen system, uh, it'll have a new pricing strategy and there'll be this optional transition. Um, so meaning a completely new system on a new platform. Um, more recently, the, the new CEO told some industry media that, that a new product is coming in May of 2013. So apparently it's on the way. Um, it'll be complementary to SolidWorks and targeted at conceptual mechanical design needs. So these, these comments came direct from the SolidWorks camp, but industry analysts have made some interesting comments as well. Um, this one's from Matt Lombard. He's a longtime SolidWorks user, author of the SolidWorks Bible. Um, and he said that, that there are a lot of end users and prospective users out there who still don't have any idea about the severity with which the SolidWorks world is about to change. That's, that's a pretty big statement coming from, from a guy like Matt Lombard. Um, this is another statement by uh, just a, a CAD blogging site saying that, uh, speaking about data inco in incompatibility, with a new engine would come data incompatibility and who knows what else. And this is really interesting. Just think of this idea. Can you rip out the engine from a Mustang and put in one from a Camaro? So hopefully you're getting an idea of the severity with which you know, a change like this um, indicates. Let's clarify it a little bit more here. Um, 
let's, let's take a look at how the kernel fits into the architecture of a CAD package like SOLIDWORKS. So at the foundation, you'll, you'll find the geometry modeling kernel along with some other pieces of technology that, that allow the software to do what it does, to compute all the, the millions of calculations that it does. On top of that, you have the SOLIDWORKS user interface and specific technologies that, that give SOLIDWORKS the look and feel that, that users have come to know. Um, but it's really the kernel, uh, that th those building blocks at the bottom, that does the heavy lifting in terms of the geometric calculations that, that, that go on behind the scenes. Um, all CAD systems have a set of core tools like this uh, for computing sketch layouts and, and 3D geometry construction, part placements, all that. Um, but there's more than one way to build a CAD tool. You know, different combinations of these core components, different building blocks at this fundamental level. For example, take a look at this example um, on the left. It's a simple four-edge blend. So a certain type of, of, of patch, a certain type of... Uh, of result happens at that corner. These are the results from the parasolid kernel, the kernel used by most CAD packages, by SolidWorks, by Solid Edge, um, and, and it's used widely across the industry. Um, shown here on the right are the results from a different modeling kernel. So notice just the difference in, in visually in what those look like. Um, uh, where all those, where all the these, these edges intersect. This may seem like a really small, insignificant difference, but think about the principle behind this. Both results are valid answers, but the point is that they're different. And moving data from one system to another requires that this second system can receive and read all those differences in geometry, all those little quirks and quirks about your models. Otherwise. Mass properties can be wrong, downstream applications and, and tooling can become invalid, and that's where you really get issues with data inca uh, incompatibility. No matter what the industry, this is why companies try to standardize on a single platform, try to eliminate impacts from, from these system differences. This is an example, uh, a company called Caprock Manufacturing. They had concerns about the, the, this upcoming kernel swap with SolidWorks. Um, a senior project engineer uh, over at Caprock claims that uh, that using SolidWorks, if you discover a mistake made earlier on, in many cases, just forget it. You might as well start over. Um, I'm sure SolidWorks users out there can relate to this. You know, not really knowing the design process for a given part, maybe someone else has designed, um, can lead to countless hours of you know wasted time spent reworking or remodeling something that someone else has already done. You know. Extrapolate this to this idea of a kernel change. How many hours will you lose during a transition to a new kernel, a new a new product, a new SolidWorks? Will the transition be smooth? You know, it, like I said, it's it's anyone's guess. And Caprock, in this example, they didn't want to wait and see. They made the move away from SolidWorks and were able to actually cut their design time by five times. Um, I'll tell you what CAD tool they moved to a little later on. I'm sure you can guess. Um, but uh, but before we go on, just take a second to to sort of think about how your company prepares for, for transitions like these. Um, with the impending changes to SolidWorks and the lack of the clear direction for what that transition process will look like, um, it's a concerning thought for, for any company utilizing SolidWorks. Have you ever opened a CAD file, created another software package? What you get in the industry is known as a dumb solid, this uneditable sort of block placeholder. Well. In, in a new version of SolidWorks, it's basically, it, it's a completely new package. SolidWorks data that you that you rely on right now will be seen as foreign CAD data in that new SolidWorks. And what will that, that translation process look like? What if you have to edit that data? It looks like you'll be in a similar position to, to the Caprock example, sinking hundreds, if not thousands of hours into remodeling and reworking designs you've already done. So how do companies prepare? Well, if you want to, to think about the future of your, of your design work, if you want to future-proof this design data, you have to look at a, key, a few key factors. Uh, three CAD systems have, have sort of become su successful through continued investment based on customer and market needs and feedback. Um, the more investment that's made in these tools, the more productive its users will be. That's the first point. Second point, um, over the years, you know, a lot of CAD vendors have attempted to integrate different technologies and users are left sort of sitting in the middle, figuring out what system to use um, while the company does R&D on, on one or maybe both. Um, the most effective CAD is a single system on a standardized platform. And the third point to consider 
in preparing for these sort of transitions is that no matter what the industry, leading companies strive to have the latest in technology so that they can be more competitive. So wouldn't it be great if you could avoid the questions surrounding the future of your current CAD package? Wouldn't it be great if you could utilize all your legacy CAD data with 100% accuracy? And wouldn't it be great if you could do it all today? Well, you can. And here's the kicker. <laughs> um, Solid Edge is a tool that companies like Caprock Manufacturing are turning to. Solid Edge is built on the Parasolid kernel, just like SolidWorks is today. And all the R&D for Solid Edge is done by Siemens PLM Software Division, the most recognized name in engineering. With Solid Edge, you can open and edit CAD data from other sources, something you can't do in SolidWorks, um, which we're going to show you very shortly in a demo from, from my colleague Liam. And Solid, Solid Edge has been gaining some serious momentum as an industry-leading alternative to SolidWorks. So let's, let's sort of frame this a little bit. Let's go back to how SolidWorks is built as a comparison. If you'll remember, uh, there are two key building blocks in SolidWorks software architecture, in, in a lot of, in, in CAD software architecture period, but in, in the SolidWorks, for example, that we, that, we, uh, that we saw before. Well, it turns out that those building blocks are written and owned by Siemens PLM. They're licensed to SolidWorks, and they're actually licensed to a handful of other CAD packages because of their proven strength and reliability in the industry. Now, Solid Edge is built on the same industry-leading building blocks and it's designed in-house. And because of this, Solid Edge is able to utilize the full potential of the technology, not the limited version that we allow SolidWorks to use. Um, you see that, that synchronous technology layer? Uh, SolidWorks doesn't get that functionality. They're, that's only available in Solid Edge, and it's because we own those building blocks. We develop them and tweak them based on what our users are asking for. Um, speaking of what our users are asking for, just have a, have a look at this. Um, this info, uh, collected by a bunch of public sources, shows that SolidWorks, our main competitor, uh, generally delivers a few hundred enhancements per version, and it's pretty consistent um, in terms of delivery rate over, over the years, over the last couple of releases. In contrast, in the blue, Solid Edge has been delivering several times as many delivered requests. In the last version, SD5, which, which was out in August of 2012, um, it was advertising that, that 1,300 new capabilities, new enhancements that were requested by designers just like you. So what can we learn from a trend like this? Well, these sort of more flat lines from SolidWorks indicate low investment or an alternative investment. What we've talked about in SolidWorks, you know, they've, they've announced this new product is being delivered and maybe more of the development dollars are going towards that compared to your current version of SolidWorks. Um, it's, it's common practice that CAD companies reinvest revenue from customer maintenance contracts back into delivering those requests. Um, but this should raise some, some concerns. The claim that the current SolidWorks will continue to be developed as long as they're in need for it, but how much will that tool really advance as, as your needs do? If there's, if there's another, you know, another, another investment pulling those de development dollars. On the other hand, uh, the superior number of delivered requests by the development team at Solid Edge indicates that customers are getting the latest in design tools and the tools involve evolving in the right direction. It's, it's evolving based on what, what Solid Edge customers are asking for. Um, Siemens has, has identified that uh, a strong user community is the key to growth. Uh, um, or sorry, is the key to continued growth on this path. Um, this past summer, they launched a series of uh, what, what we called productivity summits. Uh, it was a series of, I think, 11 to 15 um, training days, basically, summits across the U.S. and Canada. They were no cost. Um, they included a full day of technical sessions, networking opportunities with Solid Edge experts and other Solid Edge users. Um, all the R&D is done in Huntsville, Alabama, so you're talking, you get an opportunity to talk to developers who actually, you know, evolve this tool um, and, and get a chance to learn technical tips and tricks from the development team. Um, one longtime Solid Edge user who's been using the product for years now made the following comment uh, about the latest version of Solid Edge, just speaking to the evolution of the product. Rick Mason said that um, what I'm seeing in SD5 is user feedback is now making it a much more refined, usable, productive product. So you can you get in a sense of the, the evolution of this tool based on user needs. So as you look at your own design needs, 
are, are your enhancement requests getting getting delivered? Uh, is your is your CAD tool is SolidWorks really evolving the way you need it to evolve? Um, the best way to really get a feel for what Solid Edge is about and how Solid Edge has evolved is to see it in action. So I'll pass things off to Liam here, and uh, he's going to run through some examples that really illustrate the power of Solid Edge and, and how it stands apart from SolidWorks. Thanks, Patrick. Okay, guys. Hi, everyone. My name is Liam. I want to paint you a, a scenario here. Let's imagine that I'm a SolidWorks user. And what I'm looking at right now is a product that isn't really being developed. There's not a lot of enhancements coming through. I still need to cut my design costs. I need to up my productivity in order to stay competitive. But my CAD tool is kind of stagnating. Now, down the horizon, there's whispers of some sort of brand new, totally separate uh, iteration of this product. It, it's run off a totally different kernel that's untested. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a complete sort of black box. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to open up my models that I've done in old SolidWorks and if they're going to even look the same when I open them up. So what do I do? What are my options? And let's, let's imagine that someone's giving me Solid Edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up some SolidWorks files. I'm going to show you how we would work with them as sort of a what if. So I'm going to start here by hitting the open command. And I want you to notice that in this drop down menu when I'm picking my file types, I've got the ability right here to open SolidWorks part documents and SolidWorks assemblies. So I'm going to pick part documents, which is the .sld prt extension. And I'm going to pick up on this bracket right here, this, uh, this part. And I'm going to hit open. Now the first thing I want you to notice is that this model is exactly as the designer designed it in SolidWorks. And the reason is is because we're opening it in the same kernel. There's no recalculation, no rebuilding of what's happening. What we see here is exactly what the designer wanted to have. So that that that's that kind of that eases my fears right off the bat because I know that there's no, you know, weird miscalculate recalculations. I, I don't have any um features in the wrong place or, or, or being, you know, I, I've got 100% fidelity, fidelity in my part. And that's great. So I've got my part open, but what about, how do I edit it? So in Solid Edge, we've got this thing called synchronous technology, and we kind of mentioned it before. And what it basically means in the simplest terms is that if I want to move a face, I click on it, and I click on this arrow, and my face begins to move. And as I'm doing that, Solid Edge is detecting things like uh, symmetry and coplanar. It's picking up on all that geometric intelligence. What this means is that I've got the ability to drop a dimension between any two key features. Let's say the hole on this boss and this hole back here. I can drop that dimension and place it. And then what I can do is I can adjust that dimension and use it to drive my model. So watch as I roll this up, you'll see my model adjust. And I can key in the new dimension I want. Now, I'm able to do this because Solid Edge is not dependent on, on a, what we call a history tree. And that's if and you imagine how things were, were done in SolidWorks, for example. You kind of start by drawing a profile on a plane, you extrude it out, and then you draw a profile on another plane, and you cut or, or add material, and you keep kind of stacking these features on top of one another. And then when you need to get into them uh, to edit them, uh, you've got to go and find that sketch, uh, make that change, and hope that your model rebuilds correctly. Solid Edge has evolved away from the need for that. And now we can interact with the geometry directly in real time. And that lets us do these things. So what it means is that um, I've got a lot of flexibility. For example, if I wanted to adjust this dimension again, but this time I wanted to move not just this hole, but this group of holes as well as this leading face, all I need to do is put a box around that geometry. Kind of like you would in AutoCAD. It's a very simple way to interact with the geometry. Then I'm going to hit that dimension and key in my new value. And what it'll do is it'll move all of that geometry because I selected it. So you can see that you've got a very fluid way to work with um, making changes to your model. What about um, additional intelligence that we can put in? Well, if I click on a face, as we saw before, Solid Edge is going to recognize things like coplanar conditions, uh, symmetry, and I can actually override these just by toggling them with those buttons at the bottom. So I've kind of got unlimited degrees of flexibility here in how I interact with that geometry. If I want to put more intelligence in the model, um, and you might think of like, um, in, if you're using SolidWorks, you might think of a, a sketch relationship. You know, How do I add a little bit more intelligence? In Solid Edge, this doesn't happen behind the scenes buried in a sketch somewhere. This happens right out front uh, in the 3D model itself. So if I want two faces to be parallel, I'll just go up here and pick the parallel command. 
and then pick one face and then the other. And what that's going to do is that's going to make those faces parallel and collect that relationship right here, right up front in my Pathfinder. And what that means is that as I go and make more changes, this time let's add an angular dimension, Solid Edge is going to enforce that condition and keep those faces parallel. So you see that as I adjust that angle, let's make it 110 degrees, it maintains that, that condition. So what you actually have here is you have not just the ability to open your SolidWorks models with 100% fidelity, but you've got an enhanced interface in which to make modifications. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we had to make a change to this model. We had to adjust the spacing between these two holes on these bosses. And we had to change that, but do it and modify the whole width of this model at the same time. So to do that in Solid Edge with this synchronous technology, and again, remember, this is a SolidWorks model. I open this up as a SolidWorks model. I'm just going to put a box around what I need to move. I'm going to reach up and grab that dimension, and I'm going to key in my new value. And that's going to drive the rest of the model based on that dimension. There's no, nothing is dependent on the order in which I created these. Um, imagine how long a change like that would take if you had to kind of sift through a stack of features, digging into sketches to get this overall result. I'm just going to show you one more quick example. We're going to open another part, this time a sheet metal part. And by the way, I just pulled this off of grabcad.com. I don't know if you know about this. It's a great site. Um, you can download all sorts of models. And I just pulled this off of there. But I just want to show you that we can open this again in Solid Edge. And this is a SolidWorks sheet metal model. And there it is right there. And just like with the part, um, we've got the same tools to edit that. Solid Edge will recognize this as a sheet metal body. And what that means is that as I go and place dimensions between different features, and it doesn't matter where I place these, Solid Edge will recognize and maintain things like sheet metal thickness and bend radii and allow us to make these changes pretty seamlessly. And again, that's, that's dimensions between any two points. So you've kind of got this really great way to drive changes to your model without having concern for the history tree. And, and of course, we can go in and add additional features. For example, I might want to draw a line here on this face and add a jog. Of course, this is, this is sheet metal, so we have a bunch of sheet metal specific features here in Solid Edge. And then once I do that, I can use this kind of clicking on faces and picking up on key points to make some really accurate adjustments to my model. And of course, because it's sheet metal, we have the ability to generate a flat pattern out of this, which is key in everything we do. So what you're going to find when you open up a SolidWorks model in Solid Edge is that you maintain all the fidelity of your model, plus you have a, a set of tools that allow you to do things that you never could do in your previous CAD system. Um, the steering wheel is another example of that. You know, we can, we can make changes that might have been almost impossible uh, in our previous CAD system. So I'm going to pass it back over to Patrick. Perfect. Thank you, Liam. So just to, um, to wrap some things up after the demo, uh, we just want to give you a few takeaways. Um, just, just a couple things to keep in your mind about, about Solid Edge as an industry-leading um, alternative to SolidWorks, especially with some of the changes, the impending changes that are, that are happening to that product. The first takeaway is this idea of accelerated design. So the, the unique Solid Edge feature-based, history-free approach eliminates design pre-planning. So you saw in the demo that Liam didn't need to know what the thought process was of the designer who made any of those parts. He, he grabbed them from, from, from GrabCat, from, from an open source, not open source, but, but from a, you know, th those files could have come from anywhere. Um, with that, with that unique way of design using both, both 2D and 3D, you get this, this full range of digital prototyping capabilities. And as Liam also showed, synchronous technology allows you to quickly redesign and refine on the fly, which, I mean, let's face it, this is the way that projects come together in the real world. Um, you know, being constrained by, by a certain order of operations, it, it's, it's limiting to the design. 
and uh, and and your products don't deserve that. Um, so this idea of accelerated design it, it gives designers a way to get products to market you know 25% faster. This has been documented in countless cases uh, using Solid Edge. The second takeaway is this idea of faster revisions. So another thing I don't know if if you noticed while while Liam was uh, doing his demo and making the changes to those parts, um, there was no rebuild. There was no chugging along because Solid Edge doesn't need to think through every feature and every thought process in that in in what we refer to as a history tree. Solid Edge is just identifying the change that's happening at that moment, um, and it and it really it really leads to faster revisions. And without that rigid design and 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 you know the modeling constra constraints that that you might be used to. Um, you're not really worrying about how that model was created, as I said. Um, Liam kind of highlighted on it. There's there was a toolbar at the bottom called called Solid Edge Live Rules, and it lets you make changes that preserve the intent without having to to define that intent every time. Um, and the most valuable part, again, is is synchronous technology. Um, you know, models do not need to regenerate, so you can expect um, very very quick performance. So what does this all mean? That that our customers can can make changes in in minutes instead of instead of hours instead of those engineering change orders taking taking a half of your day away. And the third takeaway um, is is better reuse. So I'm like th this is case in point of Liam, Liam's example. Um, Liam was reusing data that he didn't create that he that he grabbed from from GrabCAD, uh, and and this is how Solid Edge will be can interpret current SolidWorks files, uh, Inventor files, Pro-E, you know, generic files like um, uh, STL files or, or um, anything. Uh, Solid Edge is just better for reuse. Um, you can make precise changes by adding 3D driving dimensions directly to those imported models. You can push and pull and rotate geometry with the steering wheel. Um, the steering wheel is really, really the key to Solid Edge. Um, and, and the features will be recognized by the live rule set. So there's a bunch of different technologies that are that are sort of working in tandem that, that give you some amazing functionality that you just can't get in other CAD packages. Um, so what does this mean? It means that um, your design team can make revisions in-house and eliminate you know change fees because all of all of this this better reuse of data um, can happen with one with one tool. So one more example for you before we go. Um, Helena Labs, a medical device company, was one of the first companies to purchase SolidWorks. A long time customer, they were doing fine with it, but they were very concerned about this idea of the kernel change when when word got out that that SolidWorks may be may be rocky, may be switching paths. Um, Billy Oliver, a design engineer with Helena Laboratories, he, he didn't want to wait. Um, so he took the opportunity to take a look at ways to design better and found Solid Edge. And Helena Labs moved to, to Solid Edge and preserved 100% of their, of their data. All of their data came in, no issues. Solid Edge inferred all the intelligence that was there in the history tree and allowed them to edit it and continue to make changes. Um, this is a great quote. It'll be years before SolidWorks can convert into the Katia kernel. I don't want to stagnate for 10 years. Um, to Billy's point, you know, when will this change take place? There's been a lot of confusion about this. Apparently, the new SolidWorks uh, has been in the works for roughly six years. Uh, a new product was actually just announced at, at SolidWorks World 2013 last week or, or two weeks ago. Um, but there were no live demos. Uh, there were just screenshots. And the plan is that this release, you know, it's going to be a standalone conceptual modeler. Uh, it's going to come out in the next six months or so. They'll gain some feedback and test with, uh, with an apparent release somewhere between the fall of 2013 and the next SolidWorks World. Um, a year from now, but uh, it's anyone's guess. So as you look at your own design process and, and think about the, your business goals and, and your growth goals, um, what would help you service your customers better and, and conquer the competition? Do you really have the biggest competitive advantage? Um, it's, uh, it's, it's worth taking a look at Solid Edge. It's, it's, like I said, it's built on the same kernel and, and it gives you capabilities that you just don't have in SolidWorks today. So that's pretty much where we're going to wrap things up on our end. Again, um, thanks to Liam for the demo. Liam and I are here representing Edge Design Systems. We're the Western Canada solution partner for Siemens PLM software. 
If you have any follow-up questions or, or you'd like to learn about Solid Edge, please give us a call. Um, that's, uh, that's it from our end. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your workday.